Hello and welcome back. Today we're going to be playing Dark Souls 2, but instead of making my own build, we're going to leave it up to Dan, which is the module of ChatGPT. So now we're going to ask Dan, which starting class should I choose? So we got Deprived. Not my first choice. Actually, it's probably my last choice. There's no, no upside to this class. Let's ask it about a starting gift. Bonfire Ascetic? Oh yeah, okay, that's not bad. Not my first choice, but it's definitely better than... Choosing Deprived. For this challenge, the hardest part is going to have mobility, adaptability, and just general health and stamina. So we're going to ask it what stats I should use and see what it gives us, because this should be interesting. It's going to have 20 Vigor, which is pretty bad. 25 Endurance, it's okay. 20 Vitality, that's horrible. You really shouldn't level Vitality above 10, so that's a lot of wasted stats. 25 strength, that's pretty good. Assuming we're going for like a uh, strength oriented build with all like the old knight's hammer or something good. 20 dexterity, that's less good. Quality in Dark Souls 2 is uh, really bad. There's not much that actually impacts both strength and dexterity. And then there's 10 adaptability. I, just, I don't even know if that gets us to a breakpoint. Okay, so for weapons, it, Dan recommends the Zweihander. Now, I'm not exactly up to date on my or best in slot Dark Souls 2 weapons, but I think Zweihander is pretty good for rings. Recommends the Ring of the Evil Eye, the Ring of Blades, Ring of Giants, and then the Stone Ring. Ring of Giants is actually really good for poise. It's the most poise efficient thing that you can equip. Ring of Blades is also very good, that increases your physical attack power. Ring the Evil Eye, I haven't really used, so I don't I don't know how good it is. And then the, the Stone Ring. That's more of a PvP thing, but I guess with the Zweihander we might be able to stagger some bosses that we wouldn't be able to. For our first main boss, we're gonna take on the last giant. Pretty standard souls boss. Dan was kind enough to give us the fire longsword instead of like a power stance broken straight swords. Next we're gonna progress through the different areas to get upgrade materials for eventually getting the Zweihander. We're gonna kill the scam artist so we don't have to pay to get our Zweihander. Alright, so Dan recommended we switch to the Bastard Sword and upgrade that even though we're about to get it in the next area, so whatever. We're gonna take on Mytha, the Baneful Queen, with our uh, Bastard Sword, which I also have never used in Dark Souls. Worked out pretty good, actually. A little short, but what can you say? It does good damage. Ah yes, Iron Keep. Full of pain, no matter what level you are. And finally, the weapon we've all been waiting for, the Zweihander. This should be fun. Now that we have the Zweihander, we can take on the four great ones and light the primal bonfires. First up, we're gonna have the Rotten. And since Dan recommended we use a raw Zweihander, 
I guess we're using a Raw's Y Hinder for this. It uh, doesn't do that much damage for being a greatsword and being so slow. Alright, next up we have the Old Iron King, and since we have Havel's armor, we can wear it now. Although it does make us fat roll, so for this fight I did unequip the Greaves and Gauntlets. We'll add us medium roll, make the fight a little bit easier. The Lost Sinner. I think we're a little over leveled for this fight, and she does do a decent bit of damage, but we chunk her HP way more than she chunks ours. Then Arachnophobe's worst nightmare. This boss is actually pretty hard if you're not mobile. So the main gimmick of this boss is that you can only attack two points. Uh, each head is a soft spot where you can attack. Otherwise your attacks will bounce off the armor and do no damage. And she shoots laser beams from her mouth. Alright, so now that we leveled up a bit, we have 40 Vigor, 40 Endurance, 40 Vitality, 50 Strength, 50 Dexterity, as that's what Dan told us to do. We have the Raz Wyhander and Havel set, and we're struggling up against Wilstad a little bit, so we asked Dan, hey, should I change anything about my build? Uh, yes, apparently. Dan has retracted his statement that Raz is a good idea, and we should just use the Heavy or Refined Infusion. Now I tried asking Dan about this, probing a little bit more, but I didn't really get a concrete answer on what the heavy and refined infusions are in Dark Souls 2. To the best of my knowledge, they don't exist. They only exist in Dark Souls 3. And Dan didn't really say one way or the other, so whatever, we're leaving it as standard. Now he also tells us to ditch the Havel set if we want to be a little bit more nimble. That is something I very much want. So we are going to go with the Alone Captain slash Alone Knight set to give us pretty good poise still, but they're not fat rolling anymore, which is good for this fight. Not really relevant to this video, but I did discover a new glitch. It makes me jump really high and it persists after death. So we're fighting the giant lore now to take on the giant's kinship so we can fight the final bosses. And finally, we have the Throne Watcher, Throne Defender, and Nishanda Fright. I'm gonna summon Benhart here, just to tank a little during the Watcher and Defender portion of the fight. And we're gonna chunk through, uh, while they're distracted, chunk through their HP. And we're gonna face Nishanda. The problem with Nishandra is her floating orbs will curse us and slowly drain our HP. The good news is, since we have the super jump glitch, we can just jump away, assuming we don't jump into the pit, which I did do one fight. And it should allow us to dodge her beams and orbs very easily. Well, thank you guys for watching. That was pretty painful, but not as painful as I was expecting. Be sure to like and subscribe for more content. And I'll see you in the next video.